Nandita needs no introduction. The nomenclature, the, the name of this session is Behind the Camera, A Woman Director's Perspective. We're here at Business Today's most powerful women event. And honestly, the magic that happened behind the camera was all Nandita Das. Nandita, firstly, congratulations on the theatrical release of Zilgato. But more Thank importantly, you. since we're talking about a woman director's perspective, do you think it's necessary to have that tag? Throughout, the, throughout your career, you've done all sorts of films which have been so far away from mainstream cinema. A lot of them, um, you know, touching upon topics that most people wouldn't even touch with a barge pole. Now this. Yes, this tag unfortunately doesn't leave us. Um, we all have multiple identities, but somehow being a woman takes precedence over all others because we are reminded so often. Um, you know, in 2008, when I did Firak, everyone sort of talked about this. I was all, always on, invited for these panels on women directors. That time there were barely like four or five that you could count on your fingers. And I used to really resist the tag. And I would say, you know, when I direct, I just direct. I'm not constantly thinking I'm a woman who is directing. Of course, my life experiences influence my choices and my being a woman is one of those things that sort of has an influence. But I, I really sort of was very burdened by this tag and I really didn't like it. As they say in films, cut to 2018, 10 years later. Um, over the years, we are often saying we want more women behind the camera. If you want to change the representation on screen, we want more women making decisions behind the camera. So then I thought, how can you want more women directors and not own that tag yourself? You know, I can't say that I don't want to be a woman director, but I want a lot more women directors. So I think in that 10 year journey, my relationship with that tag has changed. I'm um, not hesitant about it. I do not detest it. I want to now sort of say, yes, I'm a woman director and I want many more women to be telling their stories, bringing in that diversity of perspectives, bringing that female gaze, whatever that is, you know, which is, which is just a different gaze because we women, I mean, there's so many women here, we all have different life experiences, but we also have a shared life experiences. If today I had to talk about guilt or I had to talk about juggling between, you know, work and life and all of that, there are so many little things that even with women who are strangers, we immediately bond. So there is something called a female gaze, just as there is something called the male gaze. So, yeah, now I'm very comfortable with that tag. <laughs> Absolutely, Nandita. You know, while everyone's been giving rave reviews about Suigato, the trailer that you guys just saw, it is a theatrical release. It's not yeah. an OTT-only release, <laughs> of course. I urge all of you all to go to the cinema halls and watch this movie. It's a tearjerker. It's doing well at film festivals across the world. But more importantly, I host a technology show for the India Today group. And there's a huge tech element behind this particular movie. It's man and algorithm. Everything changed during the lockdown. And content consumption patterns changed. More importantly, how we really ordered food all, all the time and were largely apathetic to yeah. the real situation on the other end of the delivery app. So how much of this, you know, the script writing process was actually influenced, Nandita, by the algorithm? Firstly, it was born during COVID times when, uh, you know, the, the irony of stay home, stay safe, I think wasn't lost on us because we were, we were at home and we were still seeing these stories on television, on in news about so many migrant workers going, trying to go back home. So much of joblessness had increased. People were doing far more menial work than what they deserved or what they were doing earlier. So there was all of this happening and in some ways gig economy was seen a, as a bit of a savior. It was a new profession comparatively and there were a lot of young people who were delivering things while we sat at home. And it was just sort of, I was just curious that what was their life? Because this was not a traditional workspace where you have colleagues and co-workers and a boss and you ask around and you, you know, complain about something. There was no contact. You were literally on your own with this one phone in your hand and in a country that's largely, you know, not so literate, grappling with rules changing on the phone, with new instructions, and, um, you know, this, this ominous boss who's sort of invisible in some sense. Everything is on the phone. Who do you talk to? Who do you ask? Who is your colleague? 
So it was just sort of interesting that how these nameless, faceless people were just called Oi Swiggy, Oi Zomato, Oi Ola, you know, whatever it might be. They were literally just these people. And I started talking to a few people. I also had a conversation with a publisher friend who was um, sharing an article about the growing unemployment. And that's how it was born. And it was meant to be a short film. I was going to do a 20-minute film as part of an anthology. And then that anthology didn't work out and the producers of Laws Entertainment, they said, uh, why don't you make it into a feature film? And that time I was scared that I'll have to study more about algorithms and ratings and incentives, something that I wouldn't understand. But, you know, that's just on the surface. Finally, it's about human relationships. Over the years, if you see, the working class has just vanished from our popular narratives, from our collective consciousness as well. We have all sort of you know, gotten into a kind of a navel gazing. And in some sense, while a lot of people say COVID has made us more empathetic, but the flip side is COVID has also made us more selfish in a way because we are all sort of fighting for that little place. You know, if the unemployment has in increased, that's happened for a lot of people. So everyone's a little more insecure, a little more anxious. Then why are you going to think about people who are not even part of those narratives? You know, you don't think about the other if they are not part of your conversation. It's easier to forget them. So the whole idea of this film was to make them visible. And it's not easy to have a theatrical release of these kind of films. People now go to theaters to watch a spectacle. 400 crore film, 500 crore film, with a lot of VFX, big stars, all that razzmatazz, that's fine. But who wants to really see a human story, a slice of life, a thing that you could watch on your phone or an, on an OTT? You know, so human stories are really vanishing in a very conscious way. We think it's subconscious, but I think we consciously we are pushing aside. Newspapers have less pages of these. Our OTT, with all the content that is being created, you know, working class or people who are less privileged are only seen when there's something sensational. If there is something very dramatic happening, in an incident or whatever, then their stories are being told. But their regular life, do we, how much do we really know about it? So it, it has been a little bit of an uphill task to first make it, then to release it. But the good thing is the people who have seen, those kind of responses are very, very moving. Because they have sort of, it's, it's about a lot of nuances. It's about a lot of little things. Nothing big and dramatic happens in most lives, even in our lives. You know, nothing, every day there isn't a big drama. And especially those who are sort of on the margins of society, very little things happen, like a chipping away of dignity that happens almost every day. You just get used to it and you fight it sometimes in your own little way, knowing that you can't fight it too hard. So, you know, who wants to see these films? I mean, how many of you, I don't want to sort of sound like one Rondu director, but... Um, how many of you would have actually seen it? And I'm sure you are the right audience. Like someone told me that, uh, how are the riders, how are the real India going to watch it? I was like, the real India already is struggling and they know what their problems are. Let them watch the escapist cinema. You know, it's people like you and me that need to watch because we have forgotten, you know, the people who serve us. And uh, we have made them so invisible. And, and they are... They are hidden in plain sight. Nandita, we'll make it so, a little simpler for you. We have a you lovely know. audience here today. <laughs> Some very influential, uh, lovely faces. Yeah, all in the, the decision crowd. makers need to so watch. So, with a it. show of hands, how many of you all will be watching Zwigato in the cinema halls? It's going to fade away. So it's only literally up, today and tomorrow. There you go. Well, we'll see. I'll do a poll day after, please. <laughs> do another session. <laughs> see, Rahul was the first to raise Before his hand. Before Friday, if you really want to see the, it. He you'll... was the first to raise his hand. So <laughs> all of us are going to follow. But I will tell you one thing. If you look at it in hindsight, at the, end of, at the end of the day, showbiz is all about making money. Also, profits, profitability. Of is course. It's a business at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, do you think it would have made more sense to really make this an OTT-only release? and perhaps skip the whole sure. theatrical release part? Yeah, I mean, that's a very logical, pragmatic thing to do. Um, I'm a lover of watching films in theatres. I think it's wonderful to have that collective sort of experience in a dark room, not running to your phone and not having to talk to people, not fast-forwarding. So I think uh, that experience of watching a film in theatre is very special. 
in terms of numbers you know if one was in the number game i wouldn't have done the films that i do i would have been doing something else going by the number game no documentary should ever be made nobody should go into research you know uh, there are lots of things that people do which is not getting high trp and you know i i i understand the suffering of all our media friends um, there are many and you are in that game and fair enough but the point is that do these stories do they need to be told and this is not about zigato i'm sort of trying to champion independent thinking independent films you know independent anything that's truly independent so i have no regrets because those who have watched it yesterday or day before i got um, i don't know if you know of harsh mandar he's an author and a social activist and he wrote this very very moving message to me first and then he put it in an article for scroll.in and i was reading it and i was like you know even if a few people felt it so deeply it's totally worth it and maybe when it comes on ott some of you will watch it there you know we have to do what we must and the very quick <laughs> last question very tough one as well mantu firak and swigato your personal favorite three children i only have one child he's my favorite but if i had three i would still not be able to say that i think all three experiences were very different firak 2008 first film you know i wasn't trained as an actor or a director you're learning on the job manto was more than i could handle I, i had mounted a tiger like you know recreating 1940s half of it is in bombay in lahore it was really tough in different ways zigato was during covid a slice of life with nothing dramatic when all people want to see is sensational drama so they they were all difficult challenging exciting immersive in different ways i mean i think the freedom to be able to do what you want to do mm-hmm. is the biggest privilege and i'm very grateful for that a fun fact before we wrap up nandita doesn't watch much tv and she's I don't usually have a TV. she's relying on the algorithm all along so all our business today content comes to her on youtube and on twitter and on instagram <laughs> and that's how she found kapil sharma for the role i yeah. believe she hadn't watched the show before and now since Never. all our devices are listening and i understand technology a little bit Ayush, 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 Business Today, Business Today. <laughs> so now, when she goes back home, most powerful women, Business Today. <laughs> these are the search terms that will dictate her content consumption. Nandita, thanks so much for joining us, and the rest, as they say, is history. Thanks so much for being a Thank lovely you. audience as Thank well. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks a lot.